Welcome back to Harrelson Trumpets. I'm Jason, and uh, this is our second installment of how Harrelson Trumpets are made. And uh, this is a continuation of the last shop tour. So as you can see, we're back in the shop, and uh, we've got the soldering station, we've got the engraving station, we've got the for sale this summer station, <laughs> all the stuff we're getting rid of. We have uh, our stock area, We've got lots of new stock in for the new Momentum Spinning Tops. This is the CNC lathe I have for sale. I'm about to get it set up and sell it. Our new CMM, Coordinate Measuring Machine, which is amazing. Um, one of our other lathes that's extremely accurate and fast and is a game changer. Um, and then lots of the parts that I just have been making for the new series of trumpets, which I will reveal that series of trumpets in this video. Um, at least the name of the, the trumpets. And we were working on the Herco. So this is the milling machine that makes so many of the braces and other parts. And we were working on that in the last video. This is a continuation of that video. So if you uh, did not see that, you should go back because we talk about how we make all these different kinds of parts for the trumpets and how the milling machine works. And of course, all of that is machining. And here you've got uh, some very important books on machining. <laughs> it's an entire career of itself, and uh, that's one of the things that I do here at Harrelson. So let's finish machining this part. Uh, this end mill is a quarter inch end mill, and it's just going to cut off that part right there, which we'll talk about in a second. So all I need to do is go back to auto, and then push start. Okay, so now that I cut that off, um, all I need to do is pull it off because I designed it with tabs. I'll show you what that means. Um, I just need to reach in here and I can grab the part, which is just slightly warm, and I can break it off. And because I designed it with tabs, and this is something I've been doing for, I don't know, probably 15 years, um, then basically I left a tiny bit of material left on there that I can peel off, and then we have a nearly finished part. Now we just need to do a little bit of hand work. But that is uh, the brace that holds two of the tubes together on the Muse trumpet and it has a tapped thread for the third slide screw stop. And these other two holes are just to remove weight because we had too much material there. So that machine is pretty much done. Um, we're going to take the tool out. So I'm going to come over here and push stop. And we're gonna take that tool out, clear tool and spindle. And now that that's out, I can come over here and I can park the machine. And I do that because uh, it puts the machine in a safe state where it's gonna use less energy and I can come back and use it later. All right, so now that is done. Let's move on to the lathe, or at least one of the lathes. Um, the lathe that we're looking at today is an inner tech and this is a uh, well you can't see it but down there it says 429 LSS I like to show off the machines once in a while and I'm gonna be doing more and more of showing off the machines in the future I used to do it many years ago I talk a lot about the machining and I've held off on that simply because I've been doing so much work um, I haven't had time to do those videos. No other reason other than that. However, on my Instagram, I do show a lot of the machining. So for Instagram followers, you guys have been watching it and seeing it all these years. YouTubers, you've missed out on a lot of stuff. So go over to Instagram and check it out. Uh, this 42.9 LSS is exactly the same as that one over there. I have two of the same lathe. Um, actually, I've bought four of them over the years, but I sold two. So this machine, um, is going to be finishing up production on a lot of our components um, for the Summit line and the Muse line and uh, the new line of trumpets, which I'm going to introduce here in a minute. But the idea here is this summer we're going to manufacture every single thing we possibly can on this machine, and then we're going to sell it 
and we're gonna buy a new machine. Um, and we don't actually need another one of these because we have the newest version of it right over there. The one you saw as I walked in is the same brand, only it's much newer and much more advanced. So we can sell both of these uh, Intertex and be perfectly fine because we still have another very nice machine. But this one's going away because we're gonna buy a new five axis mill turn center. And uh, that is gonna allow us to do so much more than we do already. Um, so before I go any further, I wanna show you inside this machine. If we were on a live tour, that's what I would do is show you what's inside. And normally if we had a live tour, I'd be standing right here. Like tomorrow we have our live tour. Um, I guess uh, on this video, it's already passed. But uh, we try to do an open house with live tours on a Friday or Saturday, at least once a month throughout the summer and a couple times in the winter uh, or, or the other seasons as well. So we try to do five or six of those events every year. And uh, with the next one coming up, I think is Friday, July 14th. So if you have not uh, registered yet, go to whyharrelson.com and click on news and under news, um, I think it's under news or contact us. One of those uh, tabs, click on it and you're gonna find clinics and tours. Go there and register, or just call us at 303-657-2747, and we will get you scheduled to come on the next tour and see the next uh, free masterclass and get to play trumpets if you'd like, um, and just really experience Harrelson. So this is video two of a long series. You're gonna see all the other parts of the shop. Like I said before, we have four of the seven units in this huge building. Uh, and we're trying to expand more as, as we can as spaces open up. But each video is going to show in detail something completely different and you really don't wanna miss any of these. If you love trumpets or you love musical instruments or engineering um, or uh, maybe 3D printing, like I mean 3D printing as in like aerospace and medical 3D printing because that's the level we're at. We're not at a uh, hobbyist level. We're 3D printing stuff that's literally impossible to make any other way. Like this is made out of aluminum and brass and it was 3D printed. Um, so if you wanna see stuff like that or you're into CNC machining and making things, then this is the place to be because that's all I do. <laughs> I mean, literally, I don't even get to perform anymore because all I'm doing is helping you guys understand what products are gonna solve your problems and how to help you as players. And uh, aside from consulting on some things in engineering and, de and design and machining, I'm primarily here building all these things and inventing as many new fun things as I can. Uh, all of it aimed at either having a lot of fun or pushing the limits or improving your playing. And those are my, my big things that I work on. So this machine is actually really cutting edge. In terms of trumpet companies, there is no other trumpet company or musical instrument company that I know of that's using a machine like this the way we do. And, uh, and I should qualify that. Um, most of the companies don't even have like real advanced CNC machines in the first place. And the ones that do use them in a very basic way. That's not a, uh, um, that's, that's nothing against other companies. They do it different. You know, if you're a big corporation or a medium sized corporation, and you have to make lots of products and wholesale them to distributors and sell them and do all the stuff that they do. It's a machine, like the way they do it. The way we do it here is different because there are only three of us working here full time and we have one intern in the summer. So that's really three and a quarter people, right? And uh, with those three and a quarter people, we produce at least 100 trumpets every year and we produce uh, 30 to 50,000 individually made parts uh, every year. And that's literally with three people. So we leverage a lot of technology to make that easier. And uh, a lot of people like to criticize the fact that things are machined instead of handmade. The truth is the machine is just a tool to help me make things. Um, if I have over 100 trumpet pieces to put together into one trumpet, and I have a machine like this, this machine is not gonna build a trumpet. All this machine will do is whatever I tell it to do. Same with all the other machines. And when we're all done, we have to do uh, an enormous amount of handwork. The amount of handwork that's done on our CNC machine trumpets is about eight to ten times more than the handwork done on a regular fabricated trumpet. So when you want to talk about handwork, there is much more to do here. However, the way we've designed and engineered everything is so that it goes together perfect and we have 
in within the design we have every little coupler and mouthpiece part and receiver and every single piece of the trumpet has special designs within it that make sure when we assemble it it goes together absolutely perfect we don't have to worry about mismeasuring anything anymore because I designed the process so everything goes together perfect and if you buy uh, a summit with a one lead pipe and a 3RX belt today in 10 years we build another one it's going to be exactly the same except for the things that improved but the dimensions will be exactly the same and that's because we rely on really high-end technology and processes uh, blah 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 I want to show you this later this is one of my favorite tools that I've ever owned. I'll be a little bit sad to sell it soon. Check this out. So we've got a main spindle here, and uh, we put our stock in on this end. We have to choose the right size collet and the right size stock. So right in here we have a one inch stock. Let me get a little closer so it looks a little bigger. So my thumb isn't really one inch, but it, I guess it is pretty big. Um, but maybe my thumb is an inch. So uh, that's one inch stock. It's a one inch collet. This machine can go to one and five eighths inch uh, stock. So a little bigger than one and a half. I'm gonna show you the other collets. So this is where we keep our collets. And this is where I keep a picture of my dad because I love him very much. And I love to see um, how proud he is catching this Bonita in Mexico years ago, but um, <laughs> unrelated, right? So we've got all these collets and each one is a different size. The biggest one is right here. It's 42 millimeters. So you can see now it's way bigger than my thumb. Um, and they go all the way down to super tiny. The main spindle uses the big collets that look like this, and the sub spindle uses smaller collets that look like that. So let me hold them up next to each other. See the difference in size? And uh, some of the collets actually have um, round holes and some of them are hexagonal. So you can see like this one, a whole series of them are hexagons and some of them are even squares. But uh, we have to organize all those collets. And then the stock that I'm cutting like this week or this month typically ends up over here. So I put it in a spot close to the lathe. So right now I'm running all this material in the month of June. And uh, the one inch stock is this piece right here. So you can see some of it smaller and then some of it is much bigger. Now that piece is actually two inches bigger than the collets. Here's a, a one and a half, and you can see it, it's massive compared to the one. Um, yeah, that, well that's a 40, I think that's one and five eighths, so that's pretty big. Um, and then we have to put a spindle liner in every single time we load one of these. So on a CNC lathe, um, this is the back end of the spindle. If I open this up, you can see there is a spindle liner in there. And that's really important for anyone who's thinking of running a lathe. That liner there, if you're using a CNC lathe, you need to line it so that the stock is not flopping around inside the spindle because the centrifugal force of that spinning at say four or 5,000 RPM is enough to uh, bend the stock and then make it fly out of the sub spindle. And if you look at this machine, there used to be a cover here that was the interface to the bar feeder and I never hooked the bar feeder back up to this machine. But one day we had a collet that was slightly oversized and the stock came loose and this pink thing wasn't there. The stock flew out of here and it bent and then flew across the room and slammed into a wall and, and basically put a hole through the wall. It could have killed somebody. Um, I say that only because, you know, these, this is real indus industrial equipment and things could go wrong. So we're very careful to get that right. And it was a real 100% bona fide hard inch collet um, straight from them. And somehow they accidentally oversized it and it was an accident. And nobody got hurt, thankfully, but where the brass flew out was right next to our office um, in our shop in Minneapolis. So back to the machine. That's the main, sub, or the main spindle. This is the sub spindle. Lots of information here, but I like to give you as much information as you may want. Who knows who might be watching this. Some of you may have to push fast forward. You're gonna see it run in just a second. And then we'll talk about the part it's making. And this is a really fun, cool part that I think you guys are gonna like because it's for trumpet. Um, as you can see, there are lots and lots of tools on this machine. So we've got a tool missing here. I'm not using it right now. We've got a drill, that's a 200 drill, a small boring bar. I know the size and specs of every tool because I put them in here. 
Uh, a larger boring bar, uh, this is a thread relief. That is a 3 8 inch drill. This is a diamond uh, profile cutter. This is a carbide round cutter. I don't know if you can see it, let's zoom in. So that has a little round profile to it. Let's see if I put my finger under there. So that's a round instead of a sharp one. Like this one up here is sharp. Um, and it's got a little radius. This one is a full round radius. And then down here we have a cutoff tool, which is sharp again. We have a knurling tool over here. We have the bar puller, which is this thing right here. And that uh, grabs onto the bar and pulls it out. You'll see that. This is um, uh, a spring-loaded engraver. So if I want to put information on a part, I can just engrave it on the part right on this machine because it's uh, it can move in three axes. And um, so on and so forth. There are lots of other tools. An end mill, uh, that's a half-inch end mill, smaller end mill. And then this one I'll point out is a 484 ball end mill. Uh, more tools than we need for this part, but uh, we like to load it up so that the same tools can be used again and again for most of our parts, and then we have fewer to change out each time. Because setting up a Swiss type lathe like this can require a lot of work. You have to put new tool holders in, new tools, set it all up, and it can be uh, very time consuming. And I'll give you an example of what that looks like. So for instance, these drawers are filled with tools. So you can see right here, we have uh, 031 end mills. So these end mills are fairly small. Look how small that is. Let me actually pull one out so you can see it. That's how small the cutter is. And that's 031. We go down to 010, so 10 thousandths of an inch. And uh, we have lots of them. So depending on what we're cutting, you can see there's 10 to 14. Uh, over here there are 12s, and this whole thing is filled with small end mills. We come down to the next drawer, we've got all different types of drills. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. Maybe, there we go. That, I think that's better, right? Okay, so um, this is just uh, various drills, but we have every different type of drill that we use in production, and then some. And if we use one often, we may have five or 10 or 20 of them. For some tools, we may even have hundreds. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. Collets, these are the collets that are used to hold the tools in a tool holder. So let's grab a tool holder. Um, we'll grab this one right here. So that tool holder would need one of these collets to put a certain size drill in. See, there's a collet in there right now. Is it gonna focus? There it goes. So, and then we would have that the right size for the tool. And all of those have to be put together correctly. So, if you look over here, I've got a bunch of tool holders. Um, some of them are new, some of them are modular. These are special tools that fit on a modular system um, for our profile tools. So you remember I showed you that round one? This is another round one, just like it. Maybe it'll focus, yes, no, there it goes. Okay, so, that round profile is necessary for certain types of cutting. And we have these for the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so the main and the sub-spindle. And uh, I mean, we just have drawers and drawers full of tools, right? These are those shunk tools that uh, uh, are the tribo system. And basically that system was designed so that it squeezes the, the tool in there um, at all times without any kind of mechanism. Okay. Down here, uh, these are parts to uh, have pull studs for the, the VMC. These are more end mills. Let me open one of these and try not to get cut because they're very sharp. So these are very small end mills. And as you can see, we use the, a lot of them. So we have, I don't know, I can't remember how many. <laughs> we have a lot. Uh, these are parts for the tribos. And these are boring bars. So I was saying, yeah, I've got a lot of boring bars. These are all the same size boring bar. Actually, this entire section is all the same size boring bar. We use those so often, we just buy a lot all at once. Everything in orange here is the Micro 100 brand. And you can see each one is, um, is a different size. So let's pull one out. 
you'll recognize this from the lathe. So that is that one that I call the small boring bar. Is it gonna focus? There we go. And it's that little bit of dust on there is from it rubbing in the container and kind of cutting the container. It's so sharp that it would just cut my skin. If I push a little harder, it'll cut my skin. And you can see I'll put it on my, my finger now. It just cuts it. So, but it would literally cut pretty much almost anything except maybe glass. But it'll probably cut glass too. All right, so those are some of the tools. I could go on and on about all the tools, but I wanted you to see just some of the behind the scenes on our tour today. Uh, and we'll dive into specific tools and show you those uh, other times. Let's watch this machine run because that's the coolest part. I'm gonna first um, put the camera over here, zoom out a little bit so you can see me. So to run this machine, I just have to turn this safety feature off. If I push it in, it turns everything off on the machine so that if there was an accident or an emergency, you have a safe way of turning it off. And all of our industrial machines have that. So we turn it, it's, in, it's, a, it's a universal thing worldwide. We turn it, it has a spring, it releases. And then I make sure everything's set up correctly. And from there, I can come over to the control. We'll look at that. This is what the control looks like. And it's going to tell me which program I'm on. So I can push program and I can go through all my different programs and decide which one I want to run today. So today we are running BCHTRD3A. I push enter on that. There is the name of our new trumpets. 2023 Rumors and Dreams. This is the bottom cap. It's the light one, which is for rumors. And... Uh, now it almost sounds like a rumor, right? So Rumors and Dreams is a new line of trumpets. Rumors will be the lead, commercial, and somewhat versatile brighter horn. And then Dreams will be the versatile all-around horn that can be darker or a little bit brighter, depending on which setup you have. And I'll give you more information on this, but basically um, Rumors has the option of a couple of different bells and Dreams has the option of a couple of the bells, and there's one bell that overlaps between the two. So some of you may want to own the pair, uh, but you may want to start thinking about which uh, would be the instrument you want, because if you are going to get in on the pre-order series, you're going to save a huge chunk of change. Because remember, these start at four grand and up, so 4,000 to 4,500, but um, I'll release the pricing uh, in early July when we start taking pre-orders. And if you are on the pre-order list, you're gonna save a huge chunk of change on Rumors and Dreams. So let's see what this bottom cap looks like. Um, this is the, the actual code for the program. So I hand typed all this code right here and uh, I didn't use any other systems to create it. Everything that's ever been made on this machine, I hand coded right here. So I'll just scroll down, you can see some of the code. That's what the code looks like. For instance, here, it's calling up tool eight. It's saying uh, we need to move 1800 RPM clockwise, and then we need to move in X minus 0.7 inches in Z.1. G21 is a threading cycle, and it's gonna be threading this uh, 195 thousandths deep at a standard um, English uh, system of 32 teeth per inch. That's what E means. And if I change that to metric, then it would do it in metric. Um, and it does both. This machine can do either one. Next, we go back home so that we clear the, the tool block out of the way so we don't accidentally run into something. Then we call up the next tool and it moves back. So you'll see this tool block move in and out numerous times. Um, every time it does a tool change, it'll move back there out of the way. And this will be out of the way. And that's so that nothing has a collision. All right. Now we push the monitor screen and we want to run this program because you guys have waited 24 minutes to see it run. So I am going to set the camera right here and get it zoomed in perfect for you. And then I'll zoom in and out a few times as we're watching this. But we should be ready to go. So I'm going to push. Oh, let me fix that a little bit. Okay, I am now going to push start.
So now it's boring it out. So it's taking one of those boring tools, the one I showed you up close, and it is now removing the material on the inside of the part, and it's going to get it perfect. And it's already done. Now it's doing the thread relief. And the next tool is going to be threading. And you can barely see that tool down there. It's hidden by some other tools. It's done threading. That's how fast this machine is. Now it moved to tool three, and it's just creating the backside profile, which is kind of a semi-finishing stage. And so far, this isn't any kind of a miraculous It's nothing miraculous, but it's going to be. It's cutting the part off. Okay, now it's cut off. Now it's moving it to the sub spindle. It's like uh, I'm announcing a race, right? Okay, now it's going to cut out a new feature that we've never done on a, a, a trumpet part before. This is basically creating a bowl recess in the bottom cap. Isn't that cool? That's done. Sometimes I forget how fast this machine is. When I go to film it, I'm like, wow, this is really, really fast. So now it's creating uh, just an outer radius in the end profile. Okay, now here's where the real magic happens on this part. So let me get this camera set up just perfect. Okay, you see it is, it's getting in there with that ball now. It's a 404 ball now and it's creating some kind of features. So uh, we'll find out here in a minute what it's going to look like. I'm going to close the door because normally we'd have the door closed and it would look like this. So if you were on a tour, you'd be standing over here and then I would be up there by the lathe and once it's running with the door closed, you would be up there looking through the glass. So when you come here, same with that machine or this machine, any of the machines, you would be doing that. So um, we would come up here and look through the glass this way, and then hopefully you can see what's going on. But it is still cutting with that ball mill. It'll take a minute. We can also see on this machine what it looks like as it's cutting. So you can see where the tool is here. Right now the tool is that yellow box, and this is the tool path. So all of our machines have this ability to see what is cutting. And these are all the different tool paths from all the tools you saw cut so far. And this note to set tool 23 can be taken off of here, because I did it. All right. That is almost done. Oh, it is done. So now the machine is going to pull the bar. Remember that bar puller? There it's done. And now I pushed reset. And we're going to look inside here and pull out the part. That is the part. So it just cut this bottom cap. And this is something unique to Rumors and Dreams. This is actually the Rumors bottom cap. It's 0.3 inches long and it's got some new features to it. It actually is fairly hefty in weight, and that mass is going to improve the efficiency of the trumpet, but I was going for styling as well. As you can tell, this is a very different looking uh, bottom cap. So let's come over here and see some more. I've got a whole pile of them, right? So these are all the ones that I have not yet inspected, and uh, let's test it on the valve set, make sure that it's the right size. So there it is. And you can see previous styles of bottom caps on this tester uh, valve set. But that's what it's gonna look like when it's on there. And the next step is to design the top caps, which I haven't done yet. And then I'll also design the longer, uh, similar but different looking variation of this bottom cap for dreams, because there's rumors and dreams, and uh, the top cap of that one as well. And in reality, we don't normally test them on the valve set. We test them on a master mandrel, which is this one right here. So let me uh, put it on there and make sure everything's good. Yeah, it is. This is fun. All right, so that is the new Rumors bottom cap. And that's really kind of the big part of today's tour is to see uh, how we make that on the lathe. And all the receivers, 
all of the couplers, all the mouthpiece parts, uh, the lead pipes, some of the finger rings, water keys, all those things are turned and machined on either this lathe or one of the other lathes. And uh, we spend a lot of time just setting these machines up, uh, getting them ready to go. Because they're not the newest, uh, highest productive machines, um, we do have to check and inspect the parts regularly, especially if the temperature changes in the room. So we try to keep the temperature in here the same all the time. It doesn't have to be a specific temperature, it just has to stay the same. Because once the machines get up to the right uh, temperature, then they've grown to a certain size. And let's say it's 66 degrees in here, that's perfectly fine as long as it stays 66, 67. If it gets to 68 or 69, then the parts may start to become out, come out different size. And then we'd have to measure and adjust um, the tool settings, which we can do fairly easily, but it requires us to come back and do it again and again. And we prefer to just set it up and run it for an hour at a time. Uh, I'm only making, let's see what my notes say. Okay, so I'm only making um, 93 of these bottom caps. Uh, that's actually a lot, you know. People ask me, well, why do you use CNC machines? If you could do this by hand, wouldn't that be better? No, it wouldn't be better because I can make one of these probably faster than programming the machine, maybe even two. But to make 91 would not be faster. To make 91, this machine's gonna run for a very long time. Well, it's gonna run for a day. Um, and I would be working all year just to make those bottom caps. And then we'd have almost no trumpets ever to offer you guys. And the price would probably be five or six times higher than it is already. So if we're looking at rumors and dreams, is a $4,000 starting price to make it all by hand with manual machines would probably cost me, um, I would guess, around $20,000 because all of these little features are so difficult to make. And that's why standard trumpets that um, are mass produced are always the same, things don't change on them. And uh, they're made on high production machines that aren't nearly as accurate as this. Uh, so a, a lathe that does really high production um, up until probably about 10 to 15 years ago in the trumpet world, usually was a very old machine that was not very accurate and used form tools. And even today, most of them still use form tools. It's way faster than the way we do it on this machine. This is a, uh, let me see how long this part took. This part is uh, three minutes and 35 seconds for this one bottom cap. So three bottom caps is 10 minutes. Um, three finger buttons are probably gonna come out to uh, a little less time. Uh, I would say for the full mod kit, the stems, the finger buttons, the top caps and the bottom caps for one trumpet, we're probably looking at about 40 minutes um, of just machining time for just the trim. Uh, when it comes to all the other pieces, the receiver, the couplers, all those other things, you're probably looking at uh, another 30 to 40 minutes. And then we still have to make the lead pipe, we still have to make the tuning slide, we still have to do uh, all the braces and the assembly. And already we're into just the machining time is more time than it takes to build an entire trumpet in some factories. Um, so yeah, you know, we do our best to be efficient, but we also want the high quality. And you either get to be really efficient and inexpensive, or you get to have a lot of high quality and efficiencies and expense turn into the opposite. High quality costs more and it's gonna take longer to make. Um, so that's the reality. But this is the new bottom cap. I am really excited for Rumors and Dreams. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it as well. If you came on a live tour, I would give you one of the scrap pieces, which looks almost identical, as a souvenir. And uh, sometimes the scrap pieces are even like cool pieces like a brace, but we don't have any scrap ones today. So that is today's uh, tour of the machine shop. And uh, I'd like you to join me next uh, week for the next installment of how Harrelson trumpets are made. And we'll be going next door, which is on the other side of that wall. And in that video, we will be exploring uh, lasers, laser engravers, laser cutters, inlays, um, and we'll get our hands on that. Uh, future installments, we'll be talking to Christine and seeing how she does the hand finishing on the trumpets. She does most of the hand finishing, sometimes I do it. Um, Sean, who's our intern this summer, we'll get to see how he's uh, progressing with uh, learning how to 
hand finished parts and uh, then we'll also get to see the final assembly before and after plating uh, the final fit and finish with Jen there's so many things you're gonna enjoy seeing here you get to see spectrum analysis you'll get to see me measure mouthpieces and uh, our mouthpieces after they've been machined as well as mouthpieces that are vintage or even new from other companies so we can see how they were designed and uh, how we can scan those things uh, just so many things you're going to learn and see on this series so i can't wait to see you next time and uh, have a great day